But let me welcome you to my office today, and uh, I appreciate all of you being here. Certainly our water experts here from the state of Utah and for you from the press. Um, I've had the great opportunity, starting a number of years ago, to be involved with, with re really water experts throughout the state. As most everybody here knows and appreciates, you know, water is really the only limiting factor to the growth pressures of Utah. We are about the third fastest growing state in America, and so water is a really integral part of our planning process as we look forward. So how we utilize our water, how we conserve our water is really strictly uh, uh, very important. And along with that, it's also what do we do to develop more water sources to accommodate the growth that's taking place here in the state of Utah. So a combination of conserving what we have and developing what we need is really important as we go forward over the next 50 years and even beyond that. Uh, we've had a number of programs that we're working with, uh, most notably Your Utah, Your Future. We have tried to have public input on uh, our future and what would we do to accom accommodate the growth that's surely going to happen, whether you like it or not, it's going to happen here in Utah with our internal growth our higher birth rate, and people have recognized that Utah is a great state for quality of life and economic opportunity. So growth is going to be a part of our future, and how we accommodate that is a big part of it, and particularly the water component part. Uh, it's not been a big issue in recent years. As I get around the state, I don't have a lot of people rushing up to me and say, tell me what you're doing about water policy. But as we're now going through this drought, it is certainly something that's at the top of people's mind. And I've had the opportunity again with these great experts here to ha be, have briefings, and so they've kept me apprised of what we're doing when it comes to our water and, and uh, the conservation efforts that we're, we're taking here in the state of Utah. Um, they've just reconfirmed to me here in this previous meeting that uh, we're in the middle of a drought. I don't know that we needed all you experts to tell us this, but uh, uh, it really does help confirm what we all see by anecdote and see outside. And we did not have as much snowpack this past winter as we've had in times past. Uh, and uh, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. The good news is we've had a wetter spring. This past May has been, in some places, 400% of normal. But it does not make up for what we've lost in snowpack. Uh, right now, we're having about, when it comes to measuring a precipitation that we've received, uh, again, these folks can give you the finite details in all of our different regions of the state, but on a statewide average, we're probably about 75% of precipitation of what we normally would have. Um, our water capacity in our reservoirs, uh, you know, we'd like them all to be at 100% of capacity. They're not. Uh, we've had some increase in capacity with the wet uh, spring and May in particular, but even then we're still probably gone from 63, 64% to maybe in the low 70s. So capacity has increased where we are in a year to date. Uh, we hope we continue to have a, a wet summer, and, and there's about a 33% chance that we'll have a wetter summer, but there's also about a 33% chance that we're going to have a hotter summer. So those might be offsetting. So clearly what we need to be doing as a state is making sure we're very careful in how we utilize our water. And that means conservation and conservation efforts by all Utahns. We all have a part to play and a role to play when it comes to conserve the water that we have as we work towards developing more water capability as we go forward. And so really today what I'm doing is what I am capable of doing as the governor of this great state, and that's by executive order, stating that the state of Utah will lead by example, that we will in fact start taking measures to conserve in our own areas of responsibility how we utilize our water here in this state. And we're gonna use such things as more technology, uh, water sensors, uh, sensors that, that can measure the rainfall. If it's raining, why is our sprinklers on? That's a, that's a simple technology, about $50 per sensor. Uh, to more sophisticated technology on, on soil, uh, where we have, you know, soil and water content of the soil, which can tell us whether we need to water, whether it's raining or not. It's, it's the content of the, of the water in the soil. Those kind of sensors cost upwards of $200 per sensor. So, uh, again, we will be working with our uh, 
different departments to make sure that we use technology to improve our water utilization, to make it more efficient, get the best bang for the drop of water that we can out of what we receive here, and save and conserve and stretch our water usage. Uh, along with that, we're also having our departments uh, in their budgets to take a look at what can be done practically, what can be done now immediately without any additional appropriations of, of money, and making sure that uh, we water at the appropriate time of the day. And for us, the executive order will in fact indicate that watering will be prohibited between the hours of 10 a.m. in the morning and 6 p.m. at night. So the hot of the day, we will not be watering here on government properties. We have large properties, and I think we can make a significant difference by not only leading by example, but the actual consumption of water by using good water practices. We're also going to be looking at our plumbing and uh, seeing if we can find any leaks in the plumbing. We have found in, in, out in the marketplace that people have got leaks that are leaking water constantly, and over time, it amounts to a lot of wasted water. And so we're going to be doing what we can with our buildings and our facilities to detect any kind of inefficient plumbing, leaking that's going on, and see if we can, in fact, uh, detect those and repair and maintain them. And also uh, put in more low-flow uh, replacements where that's appropriate. So we, in fact, have, you know, a lot of you in your homes have got... Uh, lower flow shower heads, so you don't use as much water when you're showering. We're going to do the same thing in state government, see if we can find ways to replace uh, with lower flow uh, uh, plumbing uh, fixtures. So again, all this working together as we take these actions will help us to find, I think, and make significant progress towards preserving our water resources. And the state has an obligation, I think, to lead by example. And again, we'll encourage uh, those uh, across our great state in their own individual lives, whether it be in private sector, in their homes, residential use, those in commercial use, those in our agricultural business, which really have to bear the significant brunt of the drought, uh, to all uh, so look at conservation measures. And if we all work together, we're going to get through this fine. This is not a, this is a, a, a problem. It's a challenge. But it's not a crisis that we cannot meet. And if we work together, I think we can get through this summer. We hope we have a wetter winter uh, and, and build our snowpack. Uh, but we'll all work together and make sure that we, in fact, uh, utilize our water effectively. So with that, without any further ado, I'm going to sign this executive order that does what I've mentioned here already. And I'm going to have the lieutenant governor, who's here with me, uh, to sign also. As you know, all of these things take two signatures, really, uh, me to uh, make it happen as the uh, governor, but also the, the testament to my signature, which is done by the lieutenant governor. So I'll do that now. This is the action shot. For the, <laughs> the, okay. Lieutenant governor, uh, if you'll sign that with the other pen. <clears throat> Now, you can't read his signature, but I can tell you this really is Spencer <laughs> J. Cox. <laughs> 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 okay. He's doing better.